The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. at it again with another shade of blue. My name is Cody Bradley. I'm here with Thad Bell and Robert Russer. Are you guys ready to do this thing? I am so ready. We need it. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm ready. And yes, let's do this. Okay, 2020 <laughs> MLS conference alignment. Isn't it crazy it's going to be 2020? It just is. Just it sounds like throw the that out there. It does. It's it does still, sound like the future. It still is, is the future, but man. But it does sound like the future. It right. does sound like the future. How many movies have <laughs> we watched that took place in years past? I know. I didn't. I never thought I would be this old. I never, <laughs> like, I never thought of it. I'm only 30, but I, so I just never thought of that I would, you know, I never thought about this. Like, things will be old. I'll know old things. Dang, Cody, you're 30? Wow, I really didn't know that. Because <laughs> we yes, passed, what, Back to the Future in the future. We passed the Blade Runner date. Oh, yeah. did we? Okay. Yeah, and what's I know the Terminator that, date? I, I know that just because of the Tesla truck reveal was like the same day. Oh, isn't that thing ugly? Anyway, it's so bad. God, the I Mustang it. thing is worse though. I, I kind of like that one. Do you really? Yeah. Oh. Mm. Mustang thing? Truck. They did an all SUV or truck, SUV-ish. whichever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. I think it's that. nice. All electric. It's 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 nice. Yeah, it's it, no, it's it's better than the Tesla looking truck. Tesla truck thing. Oh, I hate but it. it. It that looks so much like. Have you ever seen like that old bad TV show Buck Rogers, no, like in the eighties? I have okay? not seen that. Bad. <laughs> that was like a futuristic vehicle they would have been driving around in when they were out like roaming the Badlands or something. It, that lo- that's what it looks like. That's where he got the design inspiration. I swear. I'm, I love Tesla and Elon, and I was like so excited for it, and that thing came out, and I was like, oh, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I think the letters. <laughs> Need to be bigger on the front too. <laughs> no, they're right. they're huge. But I do love the bulletproof glass. <clears throat> yeah, you yeah. saw that. And right? see, it's like I was so impressed the first demonstration with the windows. Like they they were dropping those metal balls yeah. on the window, right. and I was like, yeah. "Dang, that looks awesome!" And then they ju- it looked like they just <laughs> went a little too close to the sun there. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, 2020 MLS, the future is here. Miami to the east, Nashville to the west. Which Thir- doesn't really make sense, but it's got to be that way. Yeah, okay. 13 teams <laughs> in each conference, but it means an uneven schedule. It totally invalidates any attempt at a shield meaning anything, in my opinion. Wow. It, it, already, it already didn't mean a lot because of, and you know, one side would play each team twice and the other side only once and all that type of stuff. But now it's just totally out of the window. If if two of those teams like are at the top but they didn't play each other, that just means it makes it worthless now. Yeah, I oh, mean, no doubt. I, I had that question down. I didn't know you were going to come out so vehemently about that. I feel very strongly. Yeah, about well, it. I it could be the caffeine though, and it does suck because I always, you know, I really like the supporter shield. I wish people did care more about it, but this does diminish the value a little bit. Joff said in his article, he it takes some of the luster off of it. More than a little. Yeah. 
So I know it's a little crazy and probably Americanized, but is there something wrong with doing one for each conference? Uh, as you as it gets this big, I mean that's still someone wins the conference every year already. Yeah, and there's a point of pride to it. Yeah, I know. But do they, do they give a cup for winning, being the top team in the conference? Not the one that you don't get anything to the playoffs, playoffs, right? Right. So yeah. I mean, there's there's the Western Conference champion, and then there's the Western Conference playoff champion. Yeah. I don't forget how they phrase that sort of thing, but yeah, I don't think you get a trophy until. Uh, yeah, you don't get squat for winning the conference. There's probably a plaque besides the someplace. number one seed. Yeah. And well, yeah, it used to be you would get. Um, that was a Champions League slot. Was the uh, both conference winners of the regular season got a right. Champions League spot. It really it should be still, especially now, with uh, the two sides being pretty much separate. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I know it's not separate because they'll still play across, but. I'd actually almost rather they didn't play across at this point. Yeah, I don't like. So will it's just luck of the draw on if you get to play Atlanta United or not, or on if you get to dodge Atlanta United. Yeah, and it, and on a way or home. And how does that how is that going to work? Because right. uh, oh, this year we play Atlanta at in Atlanta. Next year we don't get Atlanta, and then the year after that we play Atlanta in Atlanta. In Atlanta again. Yeah. Right, yeah, it just right, causes yeah. so many different. Well, there's other teams coming in. <clears throat> yeah, so they, it's got to change even yeah. even more at that. But so they're going to go up to thirty. Probably Charlotte coming in is the latest, very 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 strong rumor. Charlotte will be the thirtieth team, and then they'll pause. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I almost wanted to go to three divisions at that point. Yeah, we were I, we were kicking that around briefly today in the Slack group. I saw. Yes. Yeah, that's good. that's a long conversation though. I was trying to just generally rough out which teams would go where. East Coast is relatively easy. The West yeah. Coast, it's like the I, I'm trying to remember how it went, but it, it just didn't quite work out for the middle and the west. Well, so, as yeah, I was easily. gonna say so. That's what it is. It's East, West, and Middle and well, Center, <laughs> Central, Midwest. It's um, Central, yeah. Yeah, but that's 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 the hard part. Is how do you do it? I mean, how about could, how about north, central, and south? There you go. Then you wouldn't get any benefit from less travel. Yeah, that's true. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> man. But some teams are going to get screwed because, uh, like me, I when I started doing the the east, I just started in Florida and started counting up, right? And then I get to the top, and I'm like, well, Toronto, okay, yeah. you're in the middle now, dude. Right. It. it so it just doesn't work out quite perfectly. That it's, should be MLS's slogan. It doesn't quite work out perfectly. <laughs> now, if they if if it wasn't Charlotte and it was Phoenix or Las Vegas, right. it would work out better, I think. So where do we think Sporting Kansas City will end up once they hit this these 30 teams? Will we get shuffled around again? Well, if there's a three division, we hopefully end up in the Midwest, Central, Middle you know, whatever the hell that is. So do you think that'll happen? I kind of just thought that that was maybe people just... It's speculation, but, I mean, they did it before. Yeah. There was three divisions, you know, back when there was 12 teams. Something like that. Um, it it just more... It makes more sense than having two at that point. It does. And you could... Because I... You could play each team in your division twice for... 18 games and then each team from the other two once and that would be 38 games dang that doesn't sound too bad which would bring it up to what yeah EPL plays all the other leagues yeah so that, that's not that bad and that that would make some sense and then you, like this this year you always play you know like say you're a east team you could play all central teams at home and all West teams on the road or vice versa. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It could just be a whole sweep. That way all the East could be compared to each other. You know what I mean? And right. all the West could be compared to each other and all the central could be compared to each other. It would be much easier. Of course, they probably wouldn't do it that way. So sticking with MLS, re-entry draft, second part of it, third second part of it, second, third. 
I don't know which one it is. It's actually two. a very good question. <laughs> There's only two. There's only two parts. Okay, yeah, that was the first. First part was last week. I was gonna say it just seemed like it was so long ago. I'm like, has there only been two? Jeez. Okay. Because uh, last week Sporting took uh, right. Tricky Dick Sanchez, <laughs> Richard Sanchez. That's right. <laughs> Richard. We'll go with that. Um. And this week they had the second part. Which I I was wondering if they would do anybody in the second part because you don't have to match their previous salary. In the mm. second part, you get to negotiate with them and you don't have to keep them. Um, which is why Aguadello was taken today. Yeah, yeah most likely. Yeah, yeah, because I it, he was making like six hundred thousand last year, and there's no way anybody wants to pay him six hundred thousand next year. But. If they can bring him, like, because Toronto took him, if they could bring him down to, say, a couple hundred thousand and give him a chance to score some goals again and make, yeah. make some money in the future. I, I was I was wondering if Sporting would go for, like, him or uh, Ibarra, how you ever say his name? Ibarra. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I always said it. Um, I'm terrible with names. So that's why I always question myself when I say those things. But I was wondering if they'd, like, maybe grab one of those guys and just try to you know, negotiate them to a low contract and say, hey, we'll give you a chance to prove yourself again. That would... As an insurance on whether or not they got another... Yeah, that would have seemed like a Vermees thing to do. Maybe he's bitten by the last reclamation project from New England. Well, I think a lot of fans would be happy Christian to Christian Yeah. <laughs> Kellen Rowe. <clears throat> and Kellen Rowe, yes. Good um, point. <laughs> Because honestly, even though I was unhappy with the whole name of thing, he worked out way better than Kellen did. <laughs> That's truth. It didn't take a lot to <laughs> work out better than Kellen. Because as much as we slam Namath, and nice guy, Nemo, I really wish you lots of luck wherever you go, but he did score a dozen goals last year, which is not a terrible number. Yeah. And wasn't Rowe in this draft too? Or he, not? I think he's an unrestricted free agent. Is he? Okay. So he wouldn't be in that, Okay. I think. I don't remember seeing his name on this list, but I, yeah. I could be wrong. So <laughs> he could end up anywhere. As as one person described him, he was a really good MLS 1.0 player. Exactly. But not a 2.0 player. <laughs> and definitely not, not a 3. Not a 3.0. Yeah, say point. Point sounds cooler. Not not 1.0. Right? Am I wrong right. on this? No, it's definitely you're right. point. You're definitely right. <laughs> Um, okay, how about before we go to break here, Thad, what is going on with the Comets right now? Tell us about the Comets. That's right. We do cover the Comets, don't we? I <laughs> I didn't forget that. Uh, they played their second game last weekend. Uh, first game they lost in Turlock. Second game they won at home. Turlock. Turlock, California. Ah, yes, the... <laughs> Indoor soccer powerhouse of Turlock. <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of funny because um, Did Turlock, I nail that? <laughs> huh? Did I just nail that? Are they a powerhouse? <laughs> that's about to let you know. <laughs> it, it, it is a little interesting. Last year, Turlock pretty much sucked, and they play in pretty much a rec arena. Okay? I mean, oh, it's okay. not like a real arena. So during parts of the game when it's when they're showing one end you can see the other rec field over there and like youth mm. teams playing <laughs> nice. so you know you could go like to your kids game and be standing there next to the professional game behind you right <laughs> a true community feel yeah so it's uh all right i like that i feel i don't, I don't like that i was talking shit <laughs> and last year i remember watching some of their games and i was like okay i could outrun that guy all right <laughs> It, it, and there were some guys who were not in shape playing for them. Uh, but the funny thing is when Kansas City went there and I'm looking at like some of their guys playing, I'm like, yeah, they still don't look like the like slimmest and trimmest, but they had some good players also. But ended up that they ended up winning that game uh, in overtime. And The Comets did? No, Turlock oh. did. Comets took a bad, stupid penalty, too many men on the field penalty in a uh, after a sub, and – uh, that's probably attributable to new coach, different bench coach, and people like that just not being all totally in sync. But anyway, they scored on that power play, Turlock did, to win it. And I was like, oh, man, that's bad. A lot of people are like, oh, that's terrible. Comet's losing there, right? Well, then Turlock turns around two days later, goes to San Diego, which is a indoor soccer powerhouse. Mm -hmm. San Diego soccer have won like 
seven hundred and ninety nine league championship or some <laughs> BS like that. Donovan's Donovan played there, yeah. Yep. Steve Jungle. Back and, in the day. Uh, they are that powerhouse and Turlock went to San Diego and won in San Diego. But now the real irony of that, Turlock is owned by the owner of San Diego. Oh, nice. <laughs> he bought them to save them to keep them in the league and loaned them some of their development players. And their development players went to San Diego and beat them. That was a little embarrassing. So does okay. Turlock have any Stan Stamankovic's by, by chance? You said they're a little out of shape. <laughs> you know Stan was out of shape. <laughs> ah. Um so anyway, comments though. I was, I was about to say, I gave you some time to talk about comments and we talked about Turlock. <laughs> I know, I was trying to get back to the comments. Uh, they played St. Louis Ambush last weekend and they won 6-4. Uh, Fierce rivalry, that. It, yeah, it actually is. It, yeah, I kind of actually knew that one. They uh, they got in a good little altercation last year and there was a little altercations oh, this year too I remember. in this game. Um, the... They were they uh f- some fans and one of the guys on the bench was yelling at the ambush keeper and he came over to the bench to have a little chat with the and nice. the Comets head coach and star player Leo Gibson grabbed him and like basically pushed him away, which then caused a little uh, soccer scrum of people mm-hmm. around him. Which all, we, we we call that an almost fight. Yeah, it was a lot of like <laughs> posturing and yeah chest puffing and chest all that puffing stuff. right. Um, but so anyway, one of the interesting thing about the Comets this year is they have lots of former Sporting Academy kids, it, several of them, uh, Ray Sari, Ray Lee, and um, Matt Lewis, who actually played for Swope Park, not this season but last year, and was a, one of the homegrown players for Sporting. Is um, is Hector's son? Yes. That's I was like I, maybe I'm misunderstanding that I was thinking that was Hector's son was playing Hector the famous Calder Knight yeah his son is on the Comets now yeah Hector his son Hector Hector's son Hector <laughs> Hector Hector Junior yeah I assume uh, and that's so, cool and he got some time I mean he, he's, he's a keeper yeah no oh okay he's not a keeper oh I saw another a video of another another keeper then go on yeah he's not he's definitely not a keeper okay but uh no he did all right he's He's young and he's got to adjust the the speed and all that stuff. Where like the other three guys I was mentioning have all played in the USL. Ray Lee played for a couple different teams and last year was in Hartford under Jimmy Nielsen. Ray Sari was in uh, Seattle, played for the Sounders two and then Sacramento USL team. And Matt Lewis played for Swell Park and then la- this last summer was playing for the Cosmos semi pro team. But uh. Those guys all like did well. Matt Lewis scored like two minutes into the game. Ray Sari scored. Ray Lee scored. Uh, nice. And then some of the rather normal comments. Now I asked because a friend posted on Facebook. Was Vlatko at the game? Yes. Oh okay. Oh. He was. Just at talked the game. to him. Uh, just uh, talked to him a couple days before that, and then that day a little bit. But uh, it was he was actually at the comments practice earlier in the week. Oh okay. So I kind of joking that Leo had a uh, assistant coach in Vlaco. <laughs> cool. All right. Let's take a break, and then we're going to talk about Sporting Kansas City, finally. And perhaps more money coming into this team. Some capital. So we'll be right back with more Shades of Blue soccer show. When it's a football night. When it's a football night. We can gather all the friends all around the tomb. That's not a better thing to do. all right injection of capital our friend friend of the pod daniel sperry revisited the sporting or the peter vermees interview from last week in which he used those words, an injection of capital, capital, and indicated that they're willing to, that they know they have to jump several tiers in spending. Not and exactly now, the wording. Well, close, <laughs> close. Not exactly the wording. But so, that, so that it would allow was, them to go up one, two, or three, even or th- even three tiers. Three right. tiers is like, okay, how not bottom basement were we before, but how mediocre were we looking before? 
<laughs> so yes, this was last week in the Kansas City Star, and there was a lot of I I saw it in the Cauldron Facebook page. A lot of cynicism around that post. Sperry wrote about it again and gave some perspective to it with the more recent rumors of Sporting Kansas City's potential signings, including Alan Polito and Lucas Cavallini. So let's start the conversation off with the part that says, Vermees says they've only spent $4 million on transfer fees his entire time with Sporting Kansas City. Correct. Now I know they're all about the free transfer, (laughs) but damn, that is... That is wild. That is crazy wild. Weird, wild stuff. And especially when you look at, you know, the transfer values of both of those players we mentioned are right about there or higher. They're higher. They're both higher. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, I mean, so, you know, it might not happen. We're used to that with this team. They still have to convince them. But... The sentiment of on, on seeing this, you know, on Reddit, it, the same thing when this was posted. Just a lot of the cynicism, like, oh, we've heard this before. No, we haven't. This is different in that, you know, it used to be, all right, we were trying. We, we hope it happens. Here's why it's hard. And now it's, look, we know we, know we have to jump tiers in spending. We know this, you know, he, Vermees mentions 3.0. It's an actual willingness here and knowledge that this league could pass them by if they don't start spending. So something is at least kind of different. Oh, it's definitely different. Um, Yes, Ramiz would always talk about trying to sign that elusive number 9 or 10 or whichever number you wanted to throw out there for that particular year, almost always a Mm -hmm. 9. But, yeah, he was always trying to find a way to make it work that didn't wasn't overspend because he was very, very, very frugal. And I'd always actually heard that the owners were wanting wanting him to spend more. Yeah, that was what the story used to be. And that's... Um, but then in that one article when uh, Mike Illig talked to Sam, mm-hmm. the former Sam McDowell, the uh, he he <laughs> the basically yeah he he admitted that he actually stopped uh, Vermees from trying to yeah. purchase a better striker. In 2018. Yeah, that was the first article in this philosophy change, at right. least, that I was noticing. So that was like for me is wanting to spend money at that point and them saying, well, no, look at how high. And, and I can understand that reluctance, but at the same time, he ended up saddling us with Nemo and Hurtado right. instead of maybe well, Nemo and a Cavallini or something. Yeah, but that's uh, a lot lighter of a saddle than if you – blew it on 10 million than than 1 million you know true but think how could they could have been with that extra yeah. talent well yeah i mean potentially yeah no i mean yeah, everything can still go wrong i mean you still have 20 injuries like they did last year and all that stuff yeah but i don't think i think there would have been still a little bit of difference with having somebody who could regularly put in the goals you know they would have fought through a little bit differently maybe but anyway, that's a lot of hypothetical there. Well, no, I mean, uh, to me it seemed like the margin was thin there a lot with this team a lot last year of just someone just tapping that ball in when they had the opportunity. Yeah, and then, and, and then the mentality doesn't go down the drain. You know, they don't lose all the confidence. And then, you know, it just seemed like it was it all just kind of, you know, <laughs> snowballed there for a while. Because you know, as Vermees would say, and the stats back it up, creating chances isn't a problem. Right. They did it yeah. all year. <laughs> it's been pretty consistent. Finishing was one hell of a bad problem for Nemo, for Shallowy, for anybody else that was playing up there. And I know I've, I've said Gerso could have had at least a dozen more yeah. assists if there would have been somebody there to put him in. Exactly. But how many times was there shots that were good opportunities that wasn't put in? And somebody who was a better finisher put those in. And now we're t- I, I think I, I looked at one point, I don't really remember exactly, but like four goals – five goals throughout the in the right spots in the year would have put the team into the like middle of the playoffs. And that's a different confidence factor at that point. You know, not everything is going wrong at that point. You know, you have some struggles, but it's not everything going bad. And right. all of a sudden it's that's a team that was dangerous enough to have made a little noise in the playoffs perhaps. Perhaps not. Right, perhaps. But, but no, I'm I'm right with with you there on all of that. 
one thing I, I do like though is the the two names you mentioned, Cavallini and Polito, um, that have been strongly I shouldn't say strongly rumored, but have both been linked to sporting. Those are guys that are in that reach of, okay, now they're going to spend money on transfer fees. It's a l- way higher than what they've spent before, but if they want to do something, that's what they're going to have to do. That's that two, three tiers up, mm-hmm. but it's not stupid tiers up like a, right. a, you know signing a healthy young Zlatan or a Suarez. or It's a, not overreaching in order to sign a name that someone – you know right. that the casual Kansas City fans will know. It's, it's not start. It's not training a, a starting striker from Man City or Tottenham or something like that. It's a guy from a few hundred miles south that perhaps we could move and sell on. You know, and keep and basically recoup the money a little bit. Yeah, I like it. I think they're looking in the right spot. Like Mexico is a good league to for us to pick from right now. And then. Uh, with as much as MLS and Mexican League is trying to work together on stuff, I think it's, we'll see even more of it. And we'll, that will also help the competition for Champions League, having guys mm-hmm. who are playing at that level. Oh, yeah. And also stealing some more players from South America. Because, again, one of the things that Peter said was we're looking at at, at least one player per line. At yeah, least that was, one player per line. That was what I was going to bring Which you've heard next. before, too, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did want to bring that up next. Both of those players are on the front line, but he did mention all three, and so we kind of talked about this the last podcast. What are you? What do you imagine he's looking for right now? For in in defense, at least start with starting there. I say it's got to be a center back, doesn't it? Because you got I Lindsay mean, and Zuzi on the right. You got Martins and well, okay, whoever on the left. <laughs> well, so I think it's interesting that he says like at all three lines, just because we know how much he likes versatile players. Yeah. And so it could be, you know, a, a defensive midfielder that could play center back and, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, it just, you, you never know with him. But I do, if he's going for a defender, it ha- I would assume it's a center back. Well, with well, it's eight open slots now because it was nine, right? I think it's eight open slots still. Um, and, like, six of those in the senior roster, five or six of those at the senior roster, and five international spots left. I'm hoping that they're not just like, oh, well, we're going to sign three players that are all versatile and can play all three lines kind mm-hmm. of guys, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what I was going to say. Isn't it time to move on from the Swiss Army knife, from the you know guy who can do a lot of things but nothing terribly well? Mm-hmm. Isn't it time to move on to that, move up to the next level? Sporting Kansas City has had many of those players. Exactly. And it's time to move on, I think. Well, I don't think it's time to move on from that idea totally. I think it's well. You've got to have some versatility, sure. Yeah, I mean, well, in in MLS especially because of you know the smaller rosters that yeah. makes it all that much more important. Yeah, yeah. They they can't just borrow a guy from their USL team to play for a league game. They have to. They can do it for Champions League or some of the other stuff, but at that level, you can't be playing those guys anyway. So, so do you think Barath? I know you you guys are you know. You like Barath. Do you think he's shown that he can be a starting everyday center back? Well, man, I mean, yeah, I I guess because he did. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, but does he provide what we (laughs) need there? But if he, you know, if he's center back number three, I'm excited about that. Right, exactly, yeah. Right, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at with him. Mm -hmm. I think he probably could be you know the starting guy every game if, but i you know <laughs> would you be happy with that going into the season though <laughs> happy with <laughs> it see that's where I, you know it's a fine line there like happy probably not yeah but yeah. do i think oh man i don't know mm. I, I don't think it would be a disaster <laughs> because i really we that's what we talked about last time i want I, i'm fine with if that's someone on the back line is brought in as a young center back prospect uh-huh yeah i'm fine with that also but as long with as we have hope. that number nine we're supposed to get well, and then yeah, you're gonna be yeah, happy yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> is it all in that context i just yeah yeah right <laughs> i just with the idea that that young center back would uh challenge barat for right the right. job at some point though not that much of a project no we're not mis- mentioning <laughs> not that far away. Anyway. although although i know the at least the two most recent ones he's tried that with like watubaye and amor were very <laughs> short experiments I feel like there's another one. Am I forgetting another one? No, I think that's more or less it. 
I don't think Amor was supposed to be a project, though. He was supposed to be a starting level center back for depth. I mean, he wasn't yeah. he wasn't supposed to take a Ike and Beasler's place, but he was supposed to be the third guy, right? Yeah. yeah, but I don't know. He was young enough that I think that there were hopes for more in the future. Oh yeah. I don't I don't remember his age quite honestly, but I didn't I didn't I didn't really see him as being like that young like, prospect guy. Yeah, I guess, it wasn't that I feel like he was maybe like twenty two or something like that. But um Guatabaye was supposed to be yeah. the potential you know, bring him in, see how he feels, and, you know, like a rental car, run him around for a while and see what happens. All right, so what do you imagine he's looking at in as a midfielder? Mm, Roger Espinosa's younger brother? No. <laughs> Man, if that existed. I know. Yeah, I, I mean, it, I pretty I think much think it, you're right. Um. Again, it's this. This is a really tough question, and I know I'm, we'll probably discuss it every day until they've signed people. Yes. But who do you play where? Is does Felipe move back to the sixth spot because he actually the team played fairly well with him back there? Um, but you hate to lose that ability. If you play Busio and Gutierrez up there, neither neither one of them is. It, I don't know. It just doesn't. You don't have the. A, True ten, but Sporting doesn't really play with a true ten. You got to have a if you if that's the case, you got to have. I love Ilya, but without with everything going wrong last year, it's like all the all the flaws fell apart at that point when it was all together. It, the, it worked really well, but just one thing went out of whack and everything fell from there. Mm-hmm. Ilya, we always knew he wasn't fast, so but it became exposed last year when. They didn't have anybody fast on the back line to cover for him. It, so losing Ike, losing confidence, losing injuries, all that stuff just made every single flaw exposed. So I don't know. I mean, I would love to have a six that's faster, but Ilya quality. And I don't know who that would be, and I don't know if they could get him, and that would be another, you know, million-dollar transfer fee. Yeah. How about at any line – Someone who is over six foot. We need, <laughs> we need more there you go. six I like footers that idea. at least. Woo. That shouldn't be that much to ask. Yeah, I mean, no, it's it not should that not. tall. I don't consider myself <laughs> tall. And I'm like six one, and it's you know we we need some height. We need a big motherfucker out there to head the ball in. We like, need to be more dominant in the air. That's for sure. It just I this year you know we I was kind of knew we were like a shorter team or that was once something that we didn't have. But this year I just got very frustrated by it. Like, I'm so tired of this. Why are we always so tiny? I know they go up there against some of those, like, two center backs that are six and a half feet tall and be like, okay, how is Busio going to out-jump these guys for a header? And I know, I mean, I yes, I know we had Ike, but it's like you got one guy, so they put two guys on that guy for every corner kick and what can, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I would hope that would be a quality of the center back if we get a center back that we get. Right. For sure. It's also – And a nine, ideally, but – yeah, I find it interesting that like Sporting Academy keeps turning out little skinny guys. That does seem to be the case. I All mean, of them. None of them are big. <laughs> I mean, like Freeman, I think he's probably close to six foot five, five eleven maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, maybe he's still growing because he's young, but um, you know, he's not real super tall. But even the the good center back, uh, uh, Rad, Kabe Rad, that I was kind of hoping they might sign to a homegrown contract and play it keep keep him playing at Swope for a while. He's like sub six foot or right at six foot. Okay. Okay. But no, in the midfield, I mean, I think Roger's replacement needs to be found. And I think Central America, South America is a great place to find that unless you can find some guy in Europe who's young and he hasn't been given a chance or something. But yeah, I think Pete's just smart enough to look to the future and, and grab that. Hopefully. No, it makes me sad talking about Roger's replacement, but it's inevitable. Of course. It's you're around this team long enough, everybody gets replaced. I know. And for this system, you've got to have that player. So definitely. Or the system continue or grows and evolves. I mean Yeah. But no no system stays the same because no system can can stay the same. Right, right. I mean, Barcelona, you know, was known for Tiki Taka and they're still known for great passing, but they're not that anymore. You know, it every team changes. Oh yeah. Uh, every, you know, 98% of the teams in the world now want to play out of the back. 
or at least they say that <laughs> the pep effect, <laughs> you know? Um, so it, it's, it, that will change and there'll be a, a string of years where, ah, screw it. We're just launching the ball along and hoping some fast guy runs onto it. You know, the, the Lester Vardy effect. It's all cyclical. You're yeah. so wise that <laughs> it's the, but the question is to, to be on the leading edge of the cycle so that you're the, the disruptor right, yeah. mm-hmm. and you're the one that people have a hard time playing against. That's what sporting was good at in the early years of Vermees was he was the disruptor and the, as hard as they were pressing and trying to win the ball up high and then turn it into a quick opportunity that made everybody whine about it, Salt Lake. Well, I would, uh, I would demand that you say something prophetic, but I don't know how you can get any better than, <laughs> than you have to be the leader of the disruptor. That's and the one thing is I think Vermees knows that and I think he's been trying to do that. I think he's trying to make that next thing. You know, watching trends. He's well, he was kind of the last one. People were following his uh, he the trend of spreading all of that money around to multiple players instead of you know a few big DPS. That kind of became a template briefly. Although this year is a poor example. Yeah. And it's, I, I think for smaller market teams, and I don't want to use that as an excuse, but it's still a fact, right? For smaller market teams that aren't going to be able to go out and spend $20 million for every transfer fee, right? Because that's not sustainable unless you have some rich guy that's willing to throw money away. Um, but for, for trying to build a long uh, team that's going to have that longevity and be good for a long period of time, it's a good strategy to do that sort of thing. And it, it worked for several years, but the, but even when you have that strategy work, it is a, you almost never have a team that can keep it going year after year, after year, after year, right? It's, you have that fall off that, okay, we've kept all of our strong guys, you know, the Beaslers and the Zeusies and the Espinosas. Oh man, they got old. Now you got to recycle that and find the next three, four guys to keep long-term core, and build the next six years. You know what I mean? It's but it's never gonna be every single year. And this is the year that it, everything again, every little part failed, every flaw was exposed, every domino knocked over the next problem. There it is, people. Domino. Okay, we're gonna get out of here. But in the meantime, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Blue Testament KC. Join us at thebluetestament.com and leave us a comment. Any final words, gentlemen? Scott, do you have a date tonight? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> Nobody left. Hopefully everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right, happy Thanksgiving. Go Sporting! Yeah.